Turbochargers. These little snails hiding behind our blocks have been rampant in our industry. Nowadays, pretty much each and every car comes with a turbocharger, be it a luxury sedan, be it a small hatchback or a balls out supercar. Forced induction is the norm of our industry. Wouldn't it be a fantastic idea to go through all of the ways, variations, types and setups that manufacturers and tuners go through with turbos in order to extract the optimum amount of bang from your block? Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Bhavneet Vaswani and you're watching The Drivers Up. Today we're going to be talking all about boost, pressure and power. I've got a couple of turbos, we have an office and today we're going to be talking all about these things and I'm going to try my best at showing you guys what all these tiny little magical things can do and all of the variations that you can use and implement these turbos in. So let's go. A turbocharger is comprised of two main parts which is one, the compressor and two, the turbine. So what happens is that hot exhaust gases move the turbine and compress air inside the compressor side which push air out from the little outlet into the combustion chamber in order to give you that fat bang inside the block. Now imagine this, you stamp the throttle in your car. That means you're going to be giving out more exhaust gases to the turbo hot side and that is going to make your compressor spool faster. Once that happens, there's going to be more pressure going into your chamber, which means more power, baby. I'm a power, baby! When we talk about how did this idea actually come to birth, it was mainly designed for aircraft. In the 1800s, we were still trying to search how to fly faster and how to fly higher. But the problem was, the higher you flew, the less dense was the air. And we needed to figure out a way in order to force the induction and force the air into the chamber internally and boom. That's how we got turbochargers. Finally, it's time to talk setups, the characteristics and each type of turbo. Let's start with the simplest turbo, which is the single turbo. Now, I think this is the best time to talk about the curveball that is turbo lag. To define turbo lag in the most layman of terms, turbo lag is the gap between you pressing the throttle and the turbocharger actually shoving that air into the compression chamber and giving you that shove to your seat. For example, if you have a small block with a relatively big turbo, you're going to be suffering from boost pressure just because the exhaust gas from the small block itself will struggle a little bit in order to spool the turbine in order to give you that much pressure. So you will be receiving very little pressure in the beginning RPMs and then you will have all hell break loose at the end of your RPMs, which some people enjoy, but it's not that useful. But what if you want to delete that little bit of lag in the lower RPMs? Well, that's where twin scroll turbos come into play. Twin scroll turbos have divided inlet turbine housing and they have two scrolls which means there is one scroll that spools earlier for your lower RPMs and one bigger scroll that spools later in the higher RPMs for you to get all of that power. Twin scroll turbos even allow you to assign each scroll to a specific cylinder. Now imagine you have a four pot engine with a firing order of 1, 3, 4, 2 and uh, you want uh, scroll 1 to be assigned to 1 and 4 and then 2 and 3 will be assigned with a second scroll. That means all of the power is going to be purer, denser and more robust per cylinder. That means you're also going to be getting faster exhaust gases out of the block which means even more boost later on. Now imagine that instead of the scroll being in control of the airflow going into the block, you have aerodynamic vanes that control the air going into the turbine. When the vanes are shut or closed, they would create more pressure for the turbine and when the vanes are open, they create more air. That means you will be having a turbocharger that has a flat top curve throughout the rev range. So when it's closed, you get more pressure for the low boost and when it's open, you get more air for the higher boost. 
VGTs are mainly used in diesel blocks since the exhaust gases of diesel cars are a little colder. In order for them to make petrol VGTs, you need to make them out of exotic materials, these veins, because they get really, really hot. And if you make them out of exotic materials, they kind of become impractical to produce and to manufacture. There have been a few cars that have housed VGTs in petrol cars like the Porsche 997 and I think off the top of my dome that's the only car that is kind of relevant and known by everyone that houses a VGT. This is where things get interesting. Imagine you have a twin scroll VGT. Yeah, that's real. A turbocharger that has a valve that can redirect the airflow to each scroll and open and close in order to increase or decrease the pressure into each scroll in order for you to receive all of the power, the necessary power and the optimum power at each and every level of RPM. But what if you have a massive block where just the sheer size of the block makes the turbo lag absolutely unlivable, an undrivable car? Well, that's where the second turbo comes into play. A twin turbo setup, as the name implies, is basically adding another turbo into the equation. And when it comes to V-type engines, you can assign a single turbo to each cylinder bank. Alternatively, you can also use a small turbo for the lower RPMs and a big turbo for the higher RPMs. The second mentioned configuration is known as twin sequential turbocharging which allows you to enjoy a good amount of torque at lower rpms and a good amount of power at the higher rpms making a drivable car that is controllable and predictable not like something with a huge engine and a huge turbo which just has lag all of the aforementioned setups and variations of turbochargers are pretty rudimentary are done and they are really old technology like old old older than me old but what I'm about to explain right now is the new school it's the new technology and it's exactly what is being developed as we speak and that is electric turbos a turbo that is mated to an electric compressor that gives you instant boost eliminating the lag while the real turbo actually spools up. This absolutely deletes the question of lag since the electric compressor can let the turbo spool literally at zero RPM. Now, however, it is a very difficult task to add batteries and an electric compressor to your turbo and your engine. So many manufacturers have stayed away from producing something like this. However, Audi with its SQ7 and Volvo with its S90, V90 and XC90 and its D5 Power Plus trims are all available with an electric turbo. Yes, they might not be as reliable nor as powerful as we expect an actual physical turbo to be, but it's a really good sign that our turbo technology is going to the right places. Not only have the turbochargers been at the forefront of development of technology for fuel efficiency, refinement and even power, they've also helped us car guys immensely in extracting the absolute maximum amount of power that we want out of our blocks. Small turbochargers, big turbochargers, variable geometry turbochargers, twin scroll turbochargers, you've heard it all at the driver's hub. We want to do a couple more videos that tell you crazier turbochargers but that's only if you guys want it. Do leave a like, subscribe to the channel and see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.